Good evening, and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church on this Maundy Thursday of Holy Week. It is our precedent here at Grace to allow leaders and readers to remove their mask while they are speaking. We do it uh, by a consensus, so if there is just one no, it won't happen. If that makes anyone uncomfortable, feel free to let us know. Is it okay if I remove my mask or not so much? Okay. Uh, the announcements are few this evening. Tomorrow evening, we will be gathering together in person uh, for joint worship again here at 7 p.m. Um, for a service of music and solemn reproaches. If you are joining us online, you can view the Temple Lutheran Tenebrae service on their YouTube channel. This evening, we are reinstituting communion after many months of a communion fast. In order to do that, we have individually wrapped communion elements. If you didn't receive one on your way in, during the prelude, I would invite you to go and pick one up. After uh, communion, we ask that you hold on to that and there will be uh, trash baskets on your way out the door this evening. We also ask, uh, as is the custom, that everyone this evening depart in silence. So we can now take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship with the prelude.
Please rise as you are able. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and one another. I invite you to a time of silence for reflection and individual confession in your heart. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together our prayer, to, prayer of the day. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he served your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and we now invite you to be attentive to the hearing of God's word. Israel remembered its deliverance from slavery in Egypt by celebrating the festival of Passover. This festival featured the Passover lamb, whose blood was used as a sign to protect God's people from the threat of death. The early church described the Lord's Supper using imagery from the Passover, especially in portraying Jesus as the lamb who delivers God's people from sin and death. The first reading is from the 12th chapter of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. 
They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Now we will read responsively Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. The Lord has given ear to me, never I called. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your son. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Please rise in body or in spirit. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promise. We will trust your word. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, 
you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I, what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Maker and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I'd like to do a little exercise first. If you would indulge me, if you feel safe doing so, uh, folks at home and, and folks here, just sit still and close your eyes. Keep your eyes closed. Listen to the sound of your own breathing. Is there pain in your body? Is there peace in your body somewhere? Is there an ache? Is there a place that's particularly warm? Give that place attention. Is there a place that is particularly cold? What do you feel with your eyes closed in your body when I say these words? Red. Rain. Laughter. Sadness. Love. You can come back to this space and open your eyes and feel your body in your seat. Maybe it's in a pew, maybe it's on a couch, in a chair. Wiggle your toes, feel your feet on the floor. Shrug your shoulders. I wanted to put us inside our bodies tonight 
because these days to come are full of sensations and reactions in the body. Tomorrow, a bloodied, battered, brutalized body will dangle. But for tonight, the scene is intimate and lovely. Examples of sensations that we would all want to have, right? Think about it. If you want to close your eyes again, feel free. Or feel free to leave them open, but let your mind wander. Imagine the smell of a wood-burning fire, right? Probably cooking your dinner if you were there in the upper room at the Last Supper. Maybe it would smell like some kind of meat cooking or some kind of roasted vegetables. Maybe there are candles lit around. Imagine the taste, the sensation of crumbly bread in your mouth, the smoothness of wine, maybe other elements of a Seder meal, bitter herbs, an egg, maybe the sour taste of vinegar. And now imagine the sensation of touch. What kind of clothes would you have been wearing? Maybe some scratchy sheep's wool, right? Especially on Jesus' outer robe. But then this towel, this inner garment, was known to have been particularly scratchy, like a ripped-up burlap, right? And then imagine Jesus in these rough fabrics kneeling down beside you, his hands calloused, probably dirty, and warm like a carpenter or a mason's hands would have been. And those hands are the ones touching your ankle, your heel. And then suddenly you feel with those rough hands on your feet the rush and the sensation of water. That is the visceral feeling of compassion. This compassion we see tonight from Jesus, one, unfortunately, we cannot partake in ourselves, but one, we can try to imagine to the best of our capabilities. In fact, maybe compassion doesn't quite do it justice. Let's just call it what it is. Love or in the original Greek scripture, agape. Not philos, the love for your brother, not eros, the romantic kind of love, but agape, the all-encompassing running through your veins gives you goosebumps when you're hot or warms you when you're cold. The love that runs from the top of your head, touch the top of your head, that even you folks at home, someone's watching you. Love that runs all the way from here, all the way down to here. Wiggle your toes. Every cell from here to those toes you're wiggling right now, and I'm trusting you're all good Lutherans and listening to the pastor. Those, every single one of those cells is filled with agape from God. Those same toes that Jesus himself on this night will get down on the floor with his dirty, tired hands to wash your feet before you ate a meal, no less. This night isn't just for the hearing or the seeing of God's word and Jesus' words. It's for the feeling the visceral feeling of compassion, of, of agape. It starts out at a lovely dinner party. The verses that were cut out would tell us it was such a relaxing event. There was a disciple resting on Jesus' bosom. 
And it will end tonight with us watching Jesus be stripped of everything. The hands that just rubbed our heels are suddenly taken into custody. If that doesn't send a chill down your spine or cause you to feel something somewhere, I don't know what will. These feelings we have in our body, these sensations, those are clues. Clues to where God is nudging us to pay attention, where God reaches out and touches us. Clues to where we might find God and agape dwelling within our very bodies. I could rattle off all kinds of science supporting this connection between our sensations, our, our spirituality, and our emotions. But I don't need to. Scripture does it for us. That connection is there tonight, tomorrow, Saturday, and even Sunday. Listen to how many times people talk about their bodies, their sensations, their emotions, and their reactions. I dare you to try to count them all. Try to put yourself, just like tonight, in those situations. How might you react? What sensations would you feel when you hear the sound of a nail driving through a human hand? And just like the folks in scripture who were there watching it for the first time, I pray that you feel all of these sensations. Let them happen to you. Let them wash over you. Because then, that's when you're being nudged by God, caressed by God, having water spilled over you by God, smelling God in a meal, hearing God in a loved one's laughter, or tasting God in a bite of bread. Notice where God already shows up in you. Follow it. Be with it. Hang on to it. The visceral feeling of compassion. The feeling of agape on a cellular level. If it sounds weird or silly, that's a sign. That's a clue. That's a reaction. Maybe I should try it. If other people think you're talking bonkers, nothing about following Jesus ever fit into the mold, did it? But when you do this, it means your entire body is present to God. You, too, are listening for God to speak through your body. You are opening your incarnate self to agape, the all-encompassing love from the hairs on your head to the tips of your toes. This commandment tonight, this mandatum, this mandate for which we celebrate this night, for which we name this night, Maundy Thursday, to love one another, to agape one another. How can we do it for one another if we can't do it for ourselves first? If we cannot feel the power of God's love running through our veins first, how can we expect someone else to feel that from us? These sacred days, they're for feeling. Our emotions, our bodies, our sensations. Just as Jesus and those around him did, let them happen to you. If you stand at the foot of the cross and don't shed a tear, I pray for you. If you stand at the foot of the cross and do shed a tear, welcome to the company of the women who stood there too. The women who allowed their emotions to work through them. This and all of your God-created vessels that is how we experience these holy days, and most importantly, how we receive and give agape. May you feel the visceral feeling of compassion of agape, because tomorrow, that agape will flow out of a body, 
for you. Amen. Please rise in body or in spirit. United by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith from one generation to the next. Give your church hunger for your promises and the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O oh God. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. 
especially children at the border, people of Myanmar, and the people of Syria. Establish just leadership in place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Especially Patty, Dorothy, Donald, Sarah, Betsy, the Wetzel family, Jim, Carol, and Carl, Lily, Jan, Harry, Dolores, Brandon and Bobby, Vincent and Joanne, Jack, Bill, Drew, Ruby and Miles, Steph, Mark, Karen, Dave, Matt, Linda, Luciano, Fred, Jane and George, Pat, Hetty, Dan, Denise, and Mark, and all those we name before you now on our lips and on our hearts. Grant all of them your comfort. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation to cultivate ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O oh God. Your glory shone in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O God. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Pastor Tim and I decided we would be remiss on this night of all nights to not pass the peace. We are going to ask you to remain where you are. You can flash a peace sign, give the chicken wing, take out your phone and text someone. But the peace of Christ be with you always. And that was the time in our worship service uh, where we will remember that act of Jesus in sharing bread and cup with the people who he dined with. Um, and, and I hope that you have received a small communion cup with a wafer in the packaging. And if you've not, we good? Okay, wonderful. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, almighty God. Not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and cup, that we may, uh, that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessed grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Uh, just one housekeeping note in case it's not written on the cup. All of the cups that you have received are grape juice, okay? Um, friends, taste and see that the Lord is good. And hear these words for you the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O oh Lord. You are my strength, hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, 
my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise, nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praises of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done.